Playing guitar strings on a Floyd Rose is really not that painful. It's not as easy as maybe a Les Paul or a Telly or something like that, but um, it's not so bad considering this tuning stability you get. I had to change my strings today, figured I'd turn the camera on and see how we go. Okay, no particular order. I've got um, just a headstock rest. Now you can use anything. You can use a towel, whatever. So again, you don't need these kind of things. But this one's kind of cool. You can uh, have a, a lower or higher, depending on what you do. It's just a couple of bucks, cork block. So headstock rest. Allen key, this is the tool that comes with uh, Ibanez. You need three mil. Pretty, sim pretty simple stuff there. String winder and clippers. You need, this is just two in one. But, um, you know, you need to wind the strings and be able to click the ball ends. Strings, of course, I'm using uh, on this guitar 942, and I'm just going to put any balls on there. This is a trem block. It is just to chock the bridge up while you're changing strings. You do not need this for years. I just use post-it notes or sort of anything soft. You don't need this, but it's just sort of good to have in your kit. Again, it's not that expensive. Steel wool and painter's tape. <laughs> Why do you need painter's tape? for the pickups, I'll show you that in a second. And the quad or the four zero super fine steel wool if you need to clean your frets, polish your frets. Don't get single, double or triple zero, it's too rough. Get the uh, four zero. First things first, for me, I get the trem block and put it underneath the tremolo. So as I said, the good thing about this is it's padded on the bottom so it keeps your guitar uh, sort of scratch free and it's just sort of one nice, easy thing. You know, as I said, I use post-it notes for, for years, um, but you can use anything soft or rubber or whatever. Why are you doing it? Well, it just prevents the, um, as you take the strings off, the, 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 the floating trim is just gonna sink into your cavity there, and it might even sort of um, come, out of the, uh, come out of the block. So it just sort of makes everything a lot easier. Now, if you've got a Floyd that is sort of Eddie Van Halen style where it, there's no cavity, it's flush on the body, then you obviously don't need this. Um, but that is step one. Step two, for me, is just loosen your nuts there. Now you'll feel a little bit of tension come out when you do that, just loosen them. And then it's pretty, I mean, you can leave them in there if you, if you really want, but it's easy just to take them out um, then they're just not in your way. Now, it's good to put it down in the same order as you took them off. Um, sometimes screws, you know, they don't sort of fit the best and everything, but I suppose it doesn't really matter. But uh, that's step two. Step three, snippy snippy. Now, this just makes your life easier. I do them all at once. I know some people like doing one string at a time. I um, don't really know why. When you've got the trem blocked, you know, you just don't need to, to worry about it. Um, it's a bit hard. I've got it on this. Normally I don't run it on this angle, but with the camera there, it's a bit funny. Okay, on the bridge side, you've got your, uh, your nuts here that you need to loosen with the same, same three mil uh, Allen key. For me, I'll just get the bar lifted up a little bit so it's not leaning on anything. And you just need to loosen And then with your fingers, you can, you know, do a little bit more if you need. Now these little black pieces that are locking the strings in when you tighten that, they will come loose. So if you leave your guitar sitting down, you're never gonna have a problem, but don't turn your guitar upside down while you, you know, want to do springs or whatever. Don't do it while you're changing your guitar strings because these will fall out, it's just a pain in the ass to find them. These then just pop out, nice and easy. All right, next step is obviously getting these out. Now these you can just feed through because they're all loose, you've snipped them off, nice and simple. All right, and now these aren't locking or anything like that. It doesn't really kind of defeat the point to have locking tuners, I think, on a Floyd Rose. Some have them, I think a PRS has them. Anyway, so just wind them through, take it off, whichever, whichever way, obviously, just getting the strings off. All right, so this step is optional. Some people never clean their guitar, they never polish it down, and I totally get that. Um, it's a working tool. For me, 
I don't know. I like nice, clean, <laughs> neat things. So uh, I always um, just get dust out and grime and all those sorts of things. Um, just got a microfiber cloth here. I don't go too crazy. But uh, what is that? A little bit of dirt. Now the headstock's nice and beautiful. And same down underneath the strings where the pickups are. There's just dust, right? Pick, pick dust, finger dust, all that stuff. I just give it a clean. Nothing too crazy. But I like it like that. All right, now that I've just kind of cleaned some of the dust off, I am going to polish the frets. As I said, my frets, um, I tend to do, most times I change the strings. Why? Because I don't change the strings very often, probably only three months, four months. So in that time, nickel frets, stainless steel are fine, but nickel frets get, uh, they just get grimy. So uh, I am gonna polish them. These are where the painter's tape come in. Why the hell do you need painter's tape? You can kind of use any tape I suppose that you've got. But these are magnets, your pickups, and I'm gonna use the steel wool as we saw, and you don't want steel wool getting in there at all. So nice and simple, I just get a bunch of painter's tape and uh, tape over them. Okay, done. So now when I'm doing some shavings here, any you know dust flies in, um, whatever, it's not going to be uh, not going to come in there. Okay, cool. Next step, let's polish. As I said, four zero is the grade you need. Four zeros, nothing uh, sort of less than that. Otherwise, you're going to do some possible damage there. Okay, so I only need a tiny bit of steel wool, really, but I use these fret protectors, whatever, and. You need it on a maple fingerboard or something like that because you don't want to scratch the surface. Some people on a rosewood board don't really mind because it can, you know, can clean off some of the gunk. I tend to, on my rosewood boards, I don't do that. I let lemon oil sort of do the job with a, with, a, with a cloth. So if I'm polishing frets, I always use one of these guys. Again, over the years, you collect these sorts of things. So it's nice and simple. Um, I usually hold it. You can have a rubber band and move it down or whatever. But I just hold it there and just get a tiny corner of the steel wool and now I don't know if you can see the before and after it's probably not gonna work too well there but all I do is pop it on there and rub now that is beautiful it looks brand new brand spanking new now you really notice this I mean aesthetically you can you can tell right I mean you look at your frets and they're grimy it's pretty nasty um, but when you're bending right Frets a tone as well. So when you feel, feel and tone. Now those three are done there, I don't know if you can see that. And that makes a huge difference again, protecting the pickups with the tape. So now all that's left to do is go down and do the rest. All right, then you can get your cloth, wipe off the, uh, any of the steel wool sort of residue. Frets are done. Excellent. Okay, frets are done. It's a maple board, so no lemon oil. If it's dirty and grimy, um, you can, you know, just get a maybe a, a slightly damp, you know, towel or whatever and just rub it down or any sort of non-abrasive cleaning material. Um, I'm a bit fastidious and I'll play with, um, never play with dirty hands. So my fingerboards are generally pretty good, so I don't need to do anything there. Um, right now, uh, as I said, I've, I've wiped down the guitar again, getting that steel wool off. Payton's tape comes off in preparation of restring. As I said, I'm using 942s, Ernie Ball in this case. I'm, I've been to Ernie Ball for years. I've been trying Diodario recently, but I still got a pack of these, so I'm gonna use them. All right, if you're new to a Floyd Rose, one of the things that's probably going to freak you out a little bit is cutting off the ball ends. <laughs> okay, there's no ball ends needed on a Floyd Rose. So um, I always start with the low strings, just sort of habit. Do them in order, so get your strings in order. For me, grab my 42. Okay, now again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's really just sort of what your preferred, what your habit is. Um, you can just do all the strings down in the bridge first, and then you can just do uh, tightening all up here. So that's what we're gonna do today. So all we're doing is grabbing that ball end, snipping it, done. Put that to a side. 
Okay, and this one is tricky, tricky doing it this way. I never sort of <laughs> do strings this way, but with the video and everything. So the reason, one of the reasons I leave the bar in is so I can um, push a string in and I'm pushing it down with my palm just to raise it so I can tighten this. And it's just tightened with uh, fingers for now. Okay, bend that down. Now I'll tighten it with the Allen key. Now, not too tight on any of these sorts of things. And that's it. Go through and do the rest of the strings, filling out the bridge first. Cut the ball lens off, put them in, tighten them with your finger, and then tighten them with the Allen key. One thing, if you're leaving the bar in, I've done this a hundred times. Don't have your bar under the string and then tighten it. So just be wary of that. All right, as I said, make sure the bar's out of the way. Okay, now we've got everything down here uh, fed in. Now we need to move to the headstock. All right, headstock, I stand on the uh, side of the tuners instead of the other side, it's easy to reach. Get the five strings that isn't the one you're working on, push it out of the way. Now, here's where there's you know tons of different ways. You got you want to go under this guy, all right? Okay, so as I wind it through, again, make sure you go under the string. I don't know what this is called, string thing. Don't worry about the nuts there for now. There's cat. There's a you know slot for it to go in. Now you can pull it tight, and a lot of people will do the idea where you go two tuning heads past, cut, and then come, bring it back and wind. Um, perfectly fine. I don't know why, I've just never done that. So um, I tend to do more, a little bit of slack on the string. I don't know why, I just do. I just kind of leave maybe an inch at the middle of the fingerboard, bend it um, towards the tuning pegs, push my index finger down because you want it to wind uh, underneath the slack piece and just wind. I don't know why, but that's just the way I do it. Okay, now again, I know I leave those on. I don't know why, I just do. I do it all at the end. Um, there's no right or wrong way. Obviously, you don't, you know, don't worry about that. Okay, so bring your next one through. Again, I go sort of an inch or a bit, middle of the neck. I've gone under the tree, I'm in the right slot. I fold it there, push my index finger down, and just wind. And I go till there's tension on them. I'm not looking to put it in tune right now. And do the rest. Can be a good idea to actually, this is what I normally do, didn't do it today, is line up the holes uh, first. Then when you're feeding them through, it's sort of nice and easy. As I think about it now and I'm talking about it, it looks difficult getting under these strings. Normally it's never a problem. It just feels that way because I've got a camera out. All right, now everything's on. I will typically put these in now. Same, as I said, same order. Don't tighten them yet. But now you've got strings on. You can throw these back in. Now what I might do is you can sort of tune a little bit. All right, then you go into the fun part of the guitar, which is tuning. Probably the most time intensive part is of putting a new set of strings on a guitar with a Floyd Rose, a floating Floyd Rose, is the, the tuning process. It's just sort of a one-off uh, annoying thing. So for me, I've still got my trend block in or your post-it notes or your rubber or whatever because the tension's not there yet. So I've just got a tuner plugged in, start tuning. Now on a Floyd Rose, as you tune one string in tune, you move through the next five, probably very likely your, your other string, the first string that you started with is gonna be out of tune again because every time you adjust the tension, the bridge moves. So that's gonna happen, don't worry about it. You just sort of keep going, tune all six strings. I do uh, bottom string to top string, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, now that you're sort of there, I just take the trend block out. It really just popped out on its own um, because you've got most of the tension there. Now it comes a really important thing that you can't forget and that's your string, string stretching, okay? So, you know, you're just grabbing it and just giving it tension. 
okay, up and down. So you're going to make sure it's just tight everywhere. Normally it's, you know, it's up here where you're really stretching it. But you're going to have to do this um, a few times. Now that I've got it mostly in tune, I don't know why, it's just the way I do it, I go high string down to bottom. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. On the fine tuners, loosen them pretty much all the way to the top, go in a little bit, um, because mostly you're gonna be um, flat and tuning it up. But give yourself a little bit of leeway to, um, to go the other way if you need to. So again, set your fine tuners once you're doing all this tuning kind of stuff. Okay, check again. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll do some whole steps, sort of minor third bands on the three strings. Totally knocks it out of tune. And once it stops going out of tune, then you know you're good. You can tighten all three nuts here and let the fine tuning do the work. Now, if you've kept the same gauge strings, in this case I'm nine to 42s, nothing else really needs to be done. Your bridge is gonna remain you know, parallel to the body. You don't want it up, you don't want it down, those sorts of things. If you change gauge of strings, that's another story. Again, you don't wanna over tighten it. No, it's not an engine part bolt or whatever. Just tight enough so it's not gonna come loose. Trim these off, you know, it was really weird. In doing this, I realized I, I'm never at the end trimming these off, I always do it beforehand. So when you got to explain something to someone, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. I, I wasn't on autopilot. So anyway, trim them off. And now you should be good in fine tune mode. Nice. And that's it. You can wang by dive bomb all you want. And again, it's a benefit of having a Floyd, but you've got nice, beautiful, shiny frets, clean fretboard, clean instruments. Pleasure to play. All right, see you next time.